Hey, I got a confession Been losing all momentum Looking like a human being again But that don't make it better Okay, I was uh, I was just looking for the people who are selling creative LUTs in a 40 LUT pack for 80 euro and call it a color grading course. <laughs> Hello, my name is Paul. I'm a German filmmaker. I'm a freelancer from Berlin, Germany. And if you have a camera and if you want to work professional or if you want to have the most of your camera, then maybe you use a logarithmic color profile. You have natural color profile, you have some cine-like whatever color profiles and you have the logarithmic color profile. What is a logarithmic color profile? A, log a logarithmic color profile changes the gamma curve in your camera. It provides you with more dynamic range and usually is very flat. You can usually color grade it very good, you can correct it very good. It gives you a wide range of colors, even more when you film in 10 bit. And today I want to show you how to expose vlog without a monitor, without any assistance, just with your camera, because sometimes that's not so easy. And you see this trash can? This trash can is for the people who think you'd use vlog in every situation. Vlog is not for every situation. You cannot use Vlog in everyday situation. Vlog is, in my opinion, for good conditions where you have extremely good light. For instance, when you're outdoor and uh, you have a lot of sun. It is not suited for low light conditions. Vlog provides you with a wide range of colors. It protects your highlights. The Vlog in the Panasonic system works that it provides a good range of highlights. It doesn't work so good in the shadows. You cannot use Vlog when it's too dark. Vlog is very good in overexposing. You can overexpose the sky, for instance, up to five or six stops. You have a spot metering in the camera. I come to that later. But you cannot raise the shadows in Vlog. You can raise the shadows in Vlog, but that looks terrible in my opinion. That's why you have to overexpose Vlog. About a rough for over two stops overexposing Vlog is usually pretty cool. You can use high ISO in Vlog, yes, but you have no, no noise reduction in Vlog. Um, Vlog in slow motion looks sometimes extremely terrible, extremely terrible in the full HD 180 frames per second in this camera, but Vlog in 10 bit, 50 frames per second or vlog in 4k in this camera looks exceptional good and you can create amazing videos with it. I had one condition where I really fucked up using vlogs. I had my S5 new, I had the client, it was an indoor shoot and I used vlog. I had my lights etc but I I didn't know how to expose vlog correctly and the footage looks terrible. It, it, it didn't look ultra terrible, it was okay and um, I managed to, to get it right but the, the client was happy with it but I was not happy with it. I had a lot of grain in the footage. I had to grade it like hell to make it look in, in, in acceptable in some way but uh, vlog is, is hard to expose sometimes and I want to show you now how to expose it with just the camera. I have no monitor with me. I, I have a big S1H rig with the Atomos, no, Atomos Ninja and no not the Atomos Ninja, the Atomos Shinobi monitor and you can use all kinds of tricks and gray cards and color checker cards, etc. But when you don't have this, you have just your camera, then this is the video for you. What the fuck is this? And can you hear this alarm over there? I don't know, what is this? Is this some, uh, what is this here? Uh, alarm, why is alarm here? Please uh, shut off the alarm, I want to make YouTube video. Can you imagine how hard it is to vlog with the 7200mm f2.8 lens? Well, this lens is worth every penny, I swear, that's a very good lens. I made a little video about this lens, but I took maybe uh, 45 minutes for these three shots and it's ridiculous. The app works like, I used the Panasonic Lumix app to connect with my phone and then to nail focus on me, but like the, the, the app 
is via Wi-Fi and the app loses after 20 meters the connection to the camera. Very good app Panasonic. That's amazing. 20 meters of Wi-Fi in 2023. That's very good. <laughs> Okay, using Vlog only with the monitor. You have on the top left corner here a little rectangle and it tells you how much over or underexposed the situation is. You can read here plus 2.8 stops and when you move it around you see here, okay, that's 0.3 stop underexposed, um, the water is 0.7 stops overexposed and the sky is 2.1 stops overexposed. You can recover in this camera up to 5 or 6 stops. You can overexpose very well with the Panasonic sensor. That's not so good for underexposed images, but you can save a lot of highlights with this sensor in Vlog. However, when you film something and you want to see it in your screen, you use the in-camera monitor LUT. It's a Rec. 709 LUT. I think you can even load some other LUTs on your SD cards and watch this with the other LUT. But I use the Rec. 709 LUT because that's the, mostly the LUT you will want to convert or you want to use. So, let's see how this looks maybe in the editing software. When we know overexpose it extremely. Let's say we overexpose it up to 5 point or 3.9 stops and then we even change the shutter speed 180 degrees. Looks like this. That's almost 5 points overexposed vlog. I cannot see any information in the sky that looks almost completely white but you can recover it in the editing software, as you can see here, when I pull down the footage, that looks also quite usable. So, but it's a little bit too much, we want to have it completely right. That's why we, maybe we can then also adjust the ND filter, of course I use the ND filter from Rode, but that's not possible. Yes, that's possible. Well, this ND filter works very good and you can maintain the 180 degree, 80 degree shutter rule. And and you can also use the luminance metering here. When you watch it basically, that's clearly how that goes. You have no underexposed footage. You have basically a lot of thing on the right, uh, exposed to the right, exposed to the right. Yes, it works often in Vlog, but I would not recommend it to overdo it. Um, I would work with the, with the spot metering. That's my thing to go. Well, let's make a little experiment. Let's overexpose this image completely. So the sky, I have to look in the, I have to look in the monitor. Sorry, I know it's sometimes strange. You know when people make videos with the phone and they look always in the screen and not in the camera. That looks completely stupid in my opinion. But I have to check the monitor now. So, okay, sorry. Um, so um, the sky is now exactly five stops overexposed. And let me check on my skin. My skin is also up to five stops overexposed. When I convert it now to the normal Vlog conversion LUT, that looks a little bit too bright. But I think we can save this footage. So, color correction due to the save. Um, when we now pull down this footage a little bit on every wiggles, the, the shadows a little bit, the midtones, and even the highlights, that footage looks quite usable. That's amazing. Vlog works even when you have no idea how to expose. Just film Vlog and you're good to go. So, <laughs> not exactly like this. Okay, so back to normal. Um, let me change my ND filter here. So. The sky is now two stops overexposed. We have now a two stops overexposed sky. And now converted to the, to the Rec. 709 Vlog LUT. Ta-da! That looks way better. I think that's easier so. Um, yes, you can, you can screw up Vlog, you can overexpose it pretty much and then the footage looks also okay. But I'm a fan of getting everything right in camera. And when you're getting everything right in camera, you save a lot of time. Some people say Vlog takes ultra long time to color grade it and everything, but I think when you nail the exposure directly in camera, when you know how the sensor works, you have a pretty easy life. And I mean, you pay for the camera, so I want to use the whole camera. That's why I want to use Vlog and know how to use Vlog is pretty handy in my opinion. So what you see now is underexposing Vlog. It's 180 frames per second, it's 8-bit, in full HD and it's underexposed. 
it's maybe minus two stops underexposed. Some parts are maybe on zero and it looks quite terrible when you ask me. It's especially bad when you film this slow motion. Slow motion looks even underexposed when you expose it correctly. You have a lot of grain in it. I don't know why this is the thing, but I think the color management is somehow off. Um, you need a lot of light for slow motion. You can overexpose slow motion and then you can basically um, darken the shadows a little bit that you don't see the um, the, the noise so much, but uh, that's, I, I would avoid using V-Log when I film slow motion in 180 FPS. It's also a little bit visible in 4K60, but not so much. Um, V-Log has no noise reduction in it. When you use a color profile like Natural or something, or Cinelike, whatever, or Rec. 709, you can add noise reduction levels, you can add sharpness, you can play with the colors a little bit and everything. That's not possible in V-Log because it's a different gamma curve. And I hope you learned something in this video because V-Log is ultra powerful. It gives you this filmic look. It provides your camera with more dynamic range. And I'm a huge fan of dynamic range because dynamic range is what makes the image cinematic. Cinematic is not a blurry background and I don't know, 120 FPS in 4K, that's bullshit. That's, that's for Sony kids, I think what makes the camera cinematic is a lot of dynamic range. The human eye can see up to 24 stops of dynamic range. I can see everything detail in the shadows and I, see, I can see every detail in the clouds. A camera capable of this is a cinematic camera in my, in my opinion. So do I use all the time vlog also on my client shoots? No. I don't use V-Log all the time on my client shoots, especially not indoors, especially not in low light. I use V-Log when I shoot outdoor, I use V-Log when the client has a good budget for color grading and editing. On some locations I use just a natural color profile, then that's a run and go setup like with the little, I may have a little roofer company and I film even in MP4 full HD 60 FPS or 50 FPS that my editor Jimmy then, when I work with sometimes with an editor together, then he can make cool reels with it. Um, it's, it's a thing how you how you work with the camera. Um, some people say you always have to use vlog with your camera and blah, 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 but um, I think that's that's the thing of how fast you have return times and how slow you want to work and how fast you want to work. Um, a camera is a tool. It is a purpose that you have vlog and the other color profiles have also a purpose. You are not bound to using vlog because you just learned how to use vlog, use natural, use the, the portrait color profile even. That looks amazing when you have a run, when you have a go-to photo shoot and when you have, want to have nice skin colors. That's nice when you use then the portrait color. So um, vlog for instance is also not a color profile for photos. That looks ultra terrible in photos. I would not recommend using vlog for photos. I think that's somehow bad. I mean, you can shoot raw and change a lot of colors, but for photos I use often even JPEG, natural, all the way down. <laughs> and I use and I use always um, landscape. I like the landscape color profile because I think the people on Panasonic, the people who are developing these color profiles, they they have a Vila curve and they have a raw curve and then they change the gamma curve according to the to the color profile. And I think these people are much smarter than you and me. And they know what they're doing. And they have basically a, a little more experience in changing gamma curves to a specific color profile. And I think they, they know what they're doing. And that's why I trust them. That's, that's the reason I use on some client shoots some color profile from Panasonic. So, maybe tell me your color profile. What do you like? Do you use now Vlog? Um, do you like to overexpose, underexpose Vlog? When you have a Sony, can you underexpose Vlog? Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from this German filmmaker who just became a dad. I, I talked about my daughter in the last video. I even showed some mini, mini, mini footage of her. Um, and yeah, maybe subscribe and yes, come with me to this journey. I am now a freelancer, a full-time freelancer since last June 2022. Before this, I had a little part-time job in a fitness studio and now I'm a full-time filmmaker in Berlin, Germany. That's cool. Yay.
Um, the power of little advertising in your WhatsApp status. I made a little side hustle. I have a 50 second ad pro uh, little side hustle. I basically make 50 second ads from stock footage and I always put it in my WhatsApp status and I say, yay, here now 15 second ad for 149 euros and immediately had someone responded on this WhatsApp status and said, I want a little ad for my business and that's pretty cool. I can just say, develop your business, try to make some commercials, work on your stuff and then you can make some money on the go. That's basically it. And yeah, that works. Sometimes advertising in your WhatsApp status. That's it. You don't need much followers. You need the right followers. Yeah? Business people. That's cool. Thank you very much.